budget PC cases. That phrase tends to send shivers down the spines of seasoned system builders. They know what lies in store for them during that build. Terrible airflow, no cable management, bloodied knuckles. Rest assured, this budget case from Gamdius has none of those features. What's up guys and welcome back to Craft Computing. As always, I'm Jeff. And this is the Talos M1 from Gamdius. And at $65, it sits at just about the right price point to be considered by nearly any PC system builder. But should you add it to your shortlist? For starters, this is an ATX mid-tower case featuring all the amenities of modern case design. The most prominent is the full side panel tempered glass door. It's held in place with a row of magnets and easily swings open to access your PC's innards. Once the door is open, it can be easily lifted off the hinges and set aside, which makes building in this case no more difficult than any other case out there. The glass has a very heavy smoke to it though, so the only parts that you're able to see through the glass are those with LEDs built in. The front of this case also holds a few unique features. Obviously there's the second tempered glass panel, which is kind of an elongated trapezoid design. And while it doesn't cover the entire front of the case, it does allow unrestricted airflow to the RGB fans behind it. Those two RGB fans are included along with a basic seven color RGB controller integrated into the front IO panel. The strips going up the side here are RGB as well and very well diffused and look pretty fantastic in my opinion. The RGB controller, again, is pretty basic here with just seven color choices and a couple of rainbow and fade effects. But if you're after a solid color, this does a decent enough job. The RGB controller controls both light and fan speed on each fan through a proprietary five pin cable. And in this case, it's completely standalone. Now, I've seen this controller before in the Stratos case that I reviewed for Modders Inc. some time ago. The controller is good in the fact that it can support up to 10 devices, either fans or LED strips, and provides some basic color and speed control for those. It's not so good in so much as there's no hardware or software controls for any of those features. Everything is pre-programmed in. You get seven colors and three fan speeds, either low, turbojet, or off. So yes, while the Talos M1 has RGB and fans both included, it's also the place where we most easily see the budget aspects of this case coming through. And really, that's okay for what it is. My one criticism here would be I would love to see a third RGB fan included up front as the two down below just kind of look unbalanced and a bit odd to my eyes. Staying with the front of this case, your front IO is ran along the bottom of this system. A pretty good assortment of ports awaits you here with two each USB 2.0 and 3.0 ports, audio in and out, along with your RGB, fan controls, and a power button. Along the top side of the case is a massive backlit Gamdios logo. And these two panels can actually be swapped around, placing the logo at the bottom like I have here and your IO panel at the top in its more traditional home. The light diffusion on the logo looks quite good, very similar to the light bars along the side of the case. But unfortunately, the logo is actually not an RGB panel. Under the logo, you only get yellow and there's no way to match that color with the RGB lights on the rest of the case. I would have loved to see more RGB options here as there's plenty of room left on that RGB control board. Moving to the rear of the case, we see seven PCI expansion slots for ATX boards, as well as vertical GPU mounting support for up to a two slot card. The riser cable is not included here, but it is still nice to see an option for this in such a budget tower. Now onto the inside, where it's actually fairly boring, but I mean that in the nicest way possible. There's a power supply shroud along the bottom of the case and a nice little channel along the front behind the motherboard tray for routing cables. That's about it. The Talos M1 does support 320 mil or 240 mil fans in the front, two of either size on the top and one of either size around the rear. The top fan mounts do have a magnetic dust filter over the top, and there's also a dust filter underneath the power supply, but that's it as far as filters go. Your front intake is pretty much wide open there. Motherboard installation was no problem at all, although I do recommend routing and plugging in your 8-pin EPS power connector before screwing down the motherboard, as there's not much room at the top of this case to do so once the board is installed. Cable management and cable routing in general wasn't too difficult here, and there are ample tie downs to keep everything neat and tidy. For the most part, everything just seemed to fit without too many issues. I did have one small problem, again with the 8-pin EPS cable. The cable on this power supply has two 8-pin EPS leads on it, which means that one of those two ends needed to sit behind the motherboard tray. Unfortunately, there's not enough room to have that head back there and still be able to fit the back panel on. While I got it to close, it's there right now, it was way more effort than it should have been, and there's actually a little bit of a bulge to the back of my case now. The only other minor gripe that I have as far as cable management in this case goes is with the basement shroud cutouts. For power cables, I prefer to have a straight path to connect to the motherboard or graphics card or whatever other component I'm connecting, as it just ends up looking a lot cleaner. 
The cutouts here end well short of a full-length graphics card though, meaning that as on point as the cable management is in this case, there still winds up being a random cable draped across the middle of my motherboard. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with the Gamdius Talos M1. The swinging glass door is a feature usually not seen until much higher price points. The case is not going to have any problems at all with airflow, and there's plenty of mounting options for fans or AIO cooler placement, as well as plenty of height clearance to allow for large tower air coolers like the one I reviewed last week. There are a few problems with the case, but they're not glaring at all. And for a budget case without any metal side panel or screws holding it in on this side, it's surprisingly sturdy. I think at $65, this would be an excellent option for nearly any system build at any level. But what do you guys think? Does the tempered glass door catch your eye, or do you look away because of the mismatched RGB colors on the front of it? Let me know down in the comments. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. And trust me, you're going to want to subscribe this week because next week I have a motherboard review coming up that you are not going to want to miss. Check out the video description for links on where to buy the Gamdius Talos M1, as well as any other products that I've featured here on Craft Computing. Also, if you want to directly financially back the channel, make sure to look me up on Patreon, where a minimum donation of $1 a month gets you access to my exclusive Discord server. Chat with myself and the other hosts from Talking Heads pretty much any time of day. We, we don't sleep much. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. So today we're going to be drinking Bridgeport Brewing's Sumptown Tart, which is a uh, an annual release. And each year they do a little bit different uh, fruit flavor inspired brew. Uh, this year it's a Belgian style fruit sour ale with uh, blueberries and black raspberries. Uh, I did have this on our live show, I believe with Steve, a couple of months ago. And it was pretty solid, but let's try it here on this show. There's a couple beer styles that I'm kind of a sucker for, and Belgian style is one of them. Uh, and I, I do like sours. They're not among my favorite, but uh, I think you mix the two together. Oh, it's good. The Belgian style really comes through right away. Just that a um, little bit heavier mouthfeel on it, a uh, little bit thicker bodied. I mean, it, it's it's a nice clear beer, but it, it drinks a lot thicker than you would imagine. Uh, and not like a syrupy thick, just like just a little bit heavier, just a little bit of a chewiness to it. Uh, the tartness is the next thing that you notice. It's definitely got that blueberry raspberry, almost like a tart bite to it, but without being overly sour. You can definitely smell the fruit on the nose of this, but it's not a soured or like a fermenting smell like, like some sours tend to get. Uh, it, it doesn't have that skunk to it. It doesn't have, uh, it doesn't smell like like day old wine, like some uh, some sour beers tend to get. It's actually a little bit of a sweeter smell, uh, which actually kind of takes you off guard when you taste it because it does have, like I said, kind of that sour tartness to it. Ooh, if you let it sit in your mouth a little bit, that Belgian comes on strong in the back side of it. Like I said, uh, at, at first you notice the mouth feel first and then immediately you get kind of that sour bite. If you let it sit and linger for a little bit, that Belgian just takes over. Just a good beer. Uh, 6.8%. Sumptown Tart. The rain is gone, and Portland's favorite pinup is back. Lightly cascade hopped and packed with fresh Pacific Northwest blueberries and black raspberries. This limited edition brew won't leave you feeling blue. Subtle sweetness and a touch of tart, this fruit-forward tease will leave you satisfied. Uh, as the train goes by, I don't care. Uh, I will say, out of the last couple of beers I've tasted, this is the first one that really lives up to any of the marketing materials on the back of it. Uh, and that's actually kind of an important point when I do beer reviews is if I buy a beer and, and I buy a lot of one-off beers where I'll, I'll find one bottle on the shelf and I go, oh, that looks interesting, add it to my cart. Um, if I'm buying a beer, it's either because A, I like the label or the name, but B, I, I want to taste something that you described in your marketing materials on either on the back or that I've heard online. And the easiest way for me to start knocking points off is if you tell me something on the label that I can't taste. Uh, oh, made with fresh raspberries and there's not a lick of raspberry in this thing. Sorry, you're losing points. Uh, so, so to me, expectation versus what I actually taste is actually a very important criteria. Uh, and this nails it. It's not really a Belgian. It's not really a fruit beer. It's not really a sour. It's not really an ale. It, it's somewhere in the middle. Uh, it, it's a really good mashup of flavors, I would say. And they all work well together.